Before I start this video, let me know in the comments below what your favorite book was from your childhood. I really like the Harry Potter series and of course, Nancy Drew. But as a kid, I was terrified of reading anything that was too scary. Especially since whenever I would read a scary novel, my brothers would pop into my room and try and scare me. Not fun. Not fun at all. Hey everyone, what's up and welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. I'm your host, Lindsay Ivan, and today I'm bringing you the Top 10 Scary Urban Legends from Children's Books. Hey guys, we are giving away $5,000 total during this springtime. We have already given away $2,000 out of the $5,000. If you guys want a chance to win, head over to our Instagram account, at Most Amazing Official, follow us, and look for the contest images for a chance to win. Good luck. Starting off this countdown, we have Bigfoot. Who here believes in Bigfoot? Someone sent me a message on Instagram saying that I want to find Bigfoot. I mean, like, I'm not actively searching for him, but I mean, if I could find Bigfoot, that would be amazing. Just like, I can imagine the headlines now. YouTuber finds Bigfoot. Anyway, legend goes that a seven foot tall hairy man stalks the woods in North America and in some parts of the Northwest. Lumberjacks, hikers, and campers have all claimed to have seen him. And of course you have the famous grainy photo that someone apparently captured of the monster. It's just like... From there, the legend of the Bigfoot was born. Now, this urban legend is featured in numerous children's books. Like, there's one book titled The Boy Who Cried Bigfoot. And there are several other books out there all centered around Bigfoot. Coming in at number nine, we have vampires. Oh man, when I was younger, I wanted to be a vampire so badly. That's probably thanks to the movie Twilight. And I mean, some of you already comment saying that I look like a vampire, but I'll take it. So similar to the Bigfoot, there are numerous books all about vampires. Legend goes that vampires roam the world at night searching for their next victim. They then suck the blood out of their victim. Some of their victims can even turn into vampires as well. Legend also states that vampires can die in the sun and that they hate garlic. Now there is also a legend about the vampire coffin. And this legend has been featured in numerous children's books. This legend goes that grave robbers would be opening up coffins. A couple of times, the corpse would move or wake up. Turns out that they found vampires resting in their own coffins and not actual dead people. Coming in at number eight, we have the living dummy. Okay, I have no clue how the Goosebumps series are child friendly, but I was allowed to read them as a kid. One of the books written by R.L. Stein is called Night of the Living Dummy. This book features a ventriloquist dummy named Slappy. In the book, Slappy is brought to life and pulls sadistic stunts on others. Well, this story does sound oddly like the urban legend about Robert the Doll, a supposed real-life doll that is haunted by a spirit. Apparently, Robert haunts those who disrespect him. He's believed to have caused car accidents, broken bones, injuries, and illnesses. On top of that, there's another urban legend surrounding a different doll. It's the story about a girl who receives a doll in the mail from a mysterious sender. The doll haunts the girl every night and even after trying to get rid of it, the doll just always comes back to her. Just like Slappy. The legend ends with the doll killing the girl and every time the doll kills a different girl, it collects their fingers and puts it on her own hand. Disturbing. In our seventh spot, we have the Pale Lady. This urban legend is featured in the book Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. Again. I have no clue how, but this is considered a children's book. I mean, maybe not for super young kids though, but when I was in grade six, we had it in our school's library. Clearly the librarian did not know how scary these stories were. So this legend is about a pale lady that visits a woman named Lexi in her dream. The woman has pale skin, long black hair, and black beady eyes. In her dream, Lexi is visited by the pale lady that says, this is an evil place. Run away while you still can. Lexi woke up screaming. The next day, she was supposed to go to Kingston to look at places, but decided not to go to that place, but go to a different location instead. When touring this house, she sees a dark staircase that looks identical to the one that she saw in her dreams. Then she went inside the bedroom, which again looked identical to the one in her dreams. Then all of a sudden, she hears a knock on the door. She turns around and it's the same pale lady from her dreams. She grabs her stuff and flees the house and never looked back. Now, the legend of the pale lady continues to circle around the web. In our sixth spot, we have the girl with the ribbon neck. This urban legend has been featured in multiple different scary story children's books, including the book titled In a Dark Dark Room and Other Scary Stories. Basically, this legend surrounds a girl that would always wear a ribbon around her neck, but she never explains why. When she gets older, her husband even asks about the ribbon. 
but she would always just say she can't take it off. They continue to live a happy life, they even have a cute little baby together, but the woman never takes the ribbon off. Then one day, the husband decided to see for himself. He ends up taking off the ribbon when she's sleeping. As soon as she does this, the woman's head falls off, okay? I mean, I bet the husband lost his head over that. Mm. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the microwaved poodle. So, I have no clue how this next legend is child-friendly, but it was featured in the book titled The Completely and Totally True Book of Urban Legends. Basically, the book is just a pile of outrageous and funny urban legends, but this one is quite dark. Legend goes that an old lady owned a pet poodle which she loved. One day she was drying off her dog after bathing him and had the idea to put the dog in the microwave. In her mind, she thought it would speed up the whole drying process. So she put the dog in the microwave and turned it on. She then left the room and a while later, the microwave exploded. And you can all guess what happened from there. So yeah, that's really dark and sad. Moving on to number four, we have El Chupacabra. Chupacabra is a legend about a monster that attacks animals and consumes their blood. The monster is said to be able to stand upright and resembles a large reptilian kangaroo with huge red eyes. Other people have said that the monster looks like a canine in appearance, but is hairless. It was first reported in 1995 in Puerto Rico when they said that the monster attacked their goats and sheep and left them completely drained of blood. The children's book titled The Night of the Chupacabras talks about this urban legend. It's about a brother and sister that explore a ranch in their village after hearing the tales of the chupacabra, who they think is stalking the village. In our third spot, we have the chain letter. Of course, we have all probably been a victim of a chain letter at some point in our lives. Basically, it's an email or a message that says, forward this to several people or you die or you'll be visited by this monster in your sleep or your family will die, blah, blah. Well, there is a children's book that basically touches on a similar concept. This book is called Chain Letter. It's about teens who accidentally kill a man and end up burying him at the side of the road. After a while, all the teens receive a chain letter. The letter tells them to do as they're told or else their secret will be revealed. All the teens are then forced to comply and do the tasks that the letter says. I mean, if any of you guys have seen Pretty Little Liars, then it kind of reminds me of A, but that's just me. Again, I have no clue how this is considered a children's book. In our second plot, we have the satin evening gown. Here's another urban legend that was featured in the book, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. This is a legend that surrounds a young girl who is invited to a dance. However, she doesn't have enough money to buy a new dress, so she goes to a thrift store. There, she buys a beautiful white satin dress and goes to the dance. At the dance, she's dancing and partying it up, but then she begins to feel dizzy and sick. She's taken home, and the next day when her mother goes to check on her, she's found dead. Turns out that the seller of the dress stole the dress off of a dead girl. Since the girl was dancing all night, she was sweating, and when her pores opened up, the embalming fluid got into her body and poisoned her. It slowly stopped her blood flow, and then she died. As someone who thrift shops, that's terrifying, but I mean, I always wash the clothes directly after I purchase them, so I think I'm safe. And in our number one spot, we have Lamb to the Slaughter. So this is a short story written by Ruel Dahl. I don't know about you, but I had to read the story in English class and then analyze it and do a project on it. So this story is about a woman named Mary Maloney. She's a pretty devoted wife to her husband, Patrick Maloney. She always greets him when he comes home, hangs up his coat, and makes a drink for him. One night when Patrick returns home, he tells her that he's leaving her. She then takes the frozen lamb leg that she was gonna have for dinner and smacks him on the back of the head with it. It kills him. She then continues to prepare the lamb for dinner while she's trying to get her alibi and story straight. After police investigate her home for hours, trying to find out what happened to him and looking for the murder weapon, Mary offers them to stay for dinner. The police officers then unknowingly eat the murder weapon. From this story, a bunch of urban legends were created, mainly about a wife who kills her husband and then tricks the police officers, just like how Mary did. And that's all for today's video. Let's move on to our comment shout out portion. I'll be shouting out more comments from my video, Top 10 Scary Mickey Mouse Urban Legends. Jonathan Rios commented, yet again, a legend that will be forgotten in the future. BTW, pineapple pizza. I like pineapple pizza. I know there's a lot of people out there that are like, ew, pineapples. Honestly, not that bad. Everyone's entitled to have opinions. Shelby Keller commented, Lindsay, I love your background. I'm a huge Nancy Drew fan as well. What's your favorite of the PC games? For me, it's Blackmore Manor. Ah, I'm so excited. Yeah, they're right there. It just makes me so happy when um, people notice my Nancy Drew collection. Um, I like Legend of the Crystal Skull. Um, you can DM me and we'll talk more about Nancy Drew if you want. Ah, 
so excited. Fire Elysium commented, when there's urban legends, you know who to call, Lindsay Ivan. When there's an urban legend in your neighborhood, who are you gonna call? Lindsay Ivan. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I hate myself for doing that too. <laughs> and that's all the comments I've shouted out for today's video. Make sure to comment something down below for a chance to be featured in my next comment shout out. And as always, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to Most Amazing Top 10 for more amazing videos. I've been your host, Lindsay Ivan, and I'll see you when I see you.